to listen. Sometimes you pick up things inadvertently. One time I had to go to Honolulu for a speaking engagement. Sometimes you get Spring Arbor and sometimes you get <laughs> Honolulu. You go to Honolulu from the East Coast, you wake up at three in the morning. And I was hungry. I got dressed and went out looking for a place to eat and even in a hustling, bustling city like Honolulu at three in the morning, not much is available. But up a side street, I found this greasy spoon. I went in and sat down on the stool. There were no, there were no booths, so I sat on the stool and I was the only one in the place. I didn't touch the menu. It was one of those plastic menus and grease had piled up on it. And I knew that if I opened it, something extraterrestrial would crawl out, you know. This fat guy in a greasy apron came out. He had a cigar, he put it down. He said, what do you want? Said a cup of coffee and a donut. He poured the coffee, and then he did this. It was disgusting. He went, and he picked up the donut. I hate that. So I'm sitting there, 3.30 in the morning, drinking my coffee, eating this dirty donut. And into the place come about eight or nine prostitutes. And it's a small place. And they sat on either side of me. And I tried to disappear. They were loud and they were boisterous. And I overheard one of them say, tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 39. I overheard her say that. Her friend said, so what do you want me to do? Sing happy birthday? I guess you want a cake and a party and all of that? The first woman said, I'm not expecting anything. I, I haven't had a birthday party in my whole life. I don't expect to have one now. That's all I needed. I waited until they left. I called Harry, the guy who ran the place with the dirty, greasy apron. I said, do they come in here every night? He said, yeah, why? I said, the one right next to me. He said, Agnes. I said, tomorrow's her birthday. I heard her say she never had a birthday party in her whole life. What do you say tomorrow we decorate the place, and when she comes in tomorrow, we'll have a birthday party for her? What do you think? He said, mister, that is brilliant, brilliant. He called his wife, Jan. Jan, come out here. I want you to meet my friend here. He wants to throw a birthday party for Agnes. I thought, wow, this is great. She came out, and she took my hand. She said, you wouldn't understand this because of what she does to make money. She's one of the good people in this town that cares about others. And nobody ever does anything for her. This is a good thing, mister. I said, can I decorate the place? She said, to your heart's content. I said, I'm going to bring a birthday cake. Harry said, oh, no, the cake's my thing. I thought, oh, jeez. You know. <laughs> so I got there. 2.30 in the morning, I decorated the place from one end to the other, made a big sign, happy birthday, Agnes, and put it on the mirror behind the counter. I had the place spruced. Jan had gotten the word out on the streets. By 3.15, every prostitute in Honolulu was squeezed in this place. People, it was wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes and me. <laughs> 3.30 in the morning, the door opens. In comes Agnes and her friends. I've got everybody set, everybody ready. They yell, happy birthday, Agnes, and cheer like mad. I've never seen anybody so stunned. Her knees buckled. They had to hold her up as they pulled her over it sat her down on the stool and we started singing happy birthday and they brought out the cake with the candles and she saw the cake and the candles and she lost it and started to cry. Harry just stood there with the cake and he said, all right, Agnes, blow out the candles. Come on, blow out the candles, Agnes. She tried, but she couldn't do it, so he blew out the candles. Gave her the knife and said, cut the cake. Come on now, cut the cake. She sat there for a long moment and said, I, I really don't want to cut the cake. She turned to me and she said, is that all right, mister, if I don't cut the cake? I said, it's your cake. She said, what I'd like to do is take it home and show it to my mother. Could I do that? I said, sure. She stood up. I said, do you have to do it now? She said, mister, I live two doors down. Let me take the cake and show it to my mother, and I'll bring it right back. She picked up the cake like it was the holy grail. She pushed her way through the crowd and out the door, and as the door swung slowly shut, stunned silence. You talk about an awkward moment. 
dead silence. I didn't know what to say. So I said, uh, what do you say we pray? Weird looking back on it now. A sociologist leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning in a diner. It was the right thing to do. And I prayed that Jesus would come into her life and make her new. Because Jesus can do that. Make her new again. And deliver her from what dirty, filthy man had done to her over the years. Because you know how these things start. Some guy messes over a girl at 13 or 14 and destroys her whole sense of worth and value. And it's downhill from there. And I prayed that God would deliver her. When I finished the prayer, Harry leaned over the counter and said, Hey, Campolo. You told me you were a sociologist. You're no sociologist. I know what you are. You're a preacher. What kind of church are you preaching? And one of those moments when you come up with just the right words. I said, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning. I thought it was so clever. And then he got me. He said, no, you don't. No, you don't. He said, I would join a church like that. Wouldn't we all? Wouldn't you love to belong to a church that threw birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning? I've got bad news. That is exactly the kind of church that Jesus came to create. A people that would go out into the world and listen to those who have been used but nobody listens to. Go out into the world and connect with people that nobody connects with.